Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me tell you why you may have bought the wrong hard drive for Time Machine. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now when you buy an external hard drive to use with Time Machine to back up your Mac you have lots of different choices. And more and more I hear people making the wrong one. What they're buying is a solid state drive or SSD. You of course want to get a good quality hard drive. So a solid state drive would be considered to be a better quality drive than an older hard disk drive. One that has a spinning disk in it. After all SSDs have a couple advantages over hard drives. One is that they're much faster. And another is that they're more durable. There are no moving parts. So theoretically they should last longer. However, hard disk drives have a couple of advantages that are actually more important when it comes to doing backups. The big one is that you can get larger storage sizes. You can get much larger hard drives than you can solid state drives. And another big advantage to hard drives is they're much cheaper. There is no reason to waste money when you're not going to use the extra quality that that money brings. Let's talk about each of these differences. First, while it's true that SSDs are faster, you don't really need that speed when it comes to backups. Backups run in the background. There's no rush to get them done. If it takes 4 minutes to do a backup or 1 minute to do a backup it's really not going to change things for you as you use your Mac. It's just happening behind the scenes. So you don't really need that super fast speed. Now if you're thinking, well what if I need to restore from my Time Machine backup. But hopefully you never need to do that. You should only need to have to restore from a Time Machine backup in an emergency. And in the case that it happens I wouldn't worry too much about speed. I mean your work's getting interrupted. You're probably going to have to go and do something else while the restore happens anyway. Now as for solid state drives being more durable than hard drives. Well this isn't really a factor with backups either. Because it's just the backup. If the backup fails the only time that's a problem is if it fails at the exact same time as your internal drive. And then you have two failures at once. And of course that's extremely improbable. Chances are if your backup drive fails it just fails on its own and you just replace it with a new one. And this could happen whether it's an SSD or a hard drive. Is it more likely to happen with a hard drive? It's really hard to say. You're not really using a hard drive at its full capacity when you're doing just a backup to it. It's not like the internal drive on a machine that's constantly being read from and written to. It's being used at a much lower rate. But if your concern is durability then what you should really be doing is going for a second backup that's online. So you're using a service like Backblaze and saving your files online in addition to Time Machine. Now you've got two backups and the second backup is not in the same location as the first backup. So let's talk about price and storage. But before we do let's talk about how much storage you need with a Time Machine drive. In general you should look at how much stuff you're storing on your local drive and if you have any other external drives. So maybe say you've got a one terabyte drive and it's half full and you also have an external 2 terabyte drive and that's half full. So that's 1.5 terabytes of data right now. In the future that's going to creep up to 2 terabytes and over. So you want to double that number to find the minimum size of a drive. So for 2 terabytes you would double to 4 terabytes. Now this is minimum. So I wouldn't use this. I would go with several times more than that. Matter of fact I personally go with a 12 terabyte drive but if I was to buy one today I'd go even higher than that. Remember Time Machine doesn't just store a copy of each file you have now. It stores a history. So a file that you deleted last week or last month it's got a copy of that. A file you've changed 17 times over the last 17 days you're going to have 17 copies. You want the backup to last years. You want to be able to go back and find a file that you didn't realize you deleted last year or two years ago. So you want this thing to be several times the size if you can do that. Now let's look at some size and prices. Here's a hard disk drive from Western Digital. It's a typical one. Matter of fact I have a very similar model to this. And you can see at 12 terabytes it's just over $200. This is a pretty typical price for something this size. And you can actually jump up to 14 terabytes it's going to jump up a little bit price. But then you can go from there to 16 terabytes and 18 terabytes without too much. You're still under $300 
even at 18 terabytes of storage. That's going to be able to save years of stuff. If you're doing lots of work with images, with videos and such, you're going to have lots of large files and you're going to be changing them, adding them, removing them all the time and this will allow the Time Machine backup to keep up with all that, having all that extra space. But a sweet spot does seem to be around 12 terabytes for a little over $200. Now let's compare that to solid state drives. So solid state drives typically come out right now at about $200 for 2 terabytes. Sure, there are exceptions and sometimes you can find sales, but typically you're going to pay twice that for 4 terabytes. So you're looking at 2 terabytes instead of 12 if you go with a solid state drive. And you saw I can go to 18 terabytes for the price of a typical 4 terabyte solid state drive. So you definitely get a lot more storage for a regular hard drive than you do a solid state drive. And this is true whether or not you're trying to save money or get a larger drive or both. If you really just think you need 2 terabytes or 4 terabytes, you can save a lot of money by getting a hard drive over a solid state drive. On the other hand, if you're looking at 4 terabyte solid state versus say an 18 terabyte hard drive, then the 18 terabyte one is going to be a much better option as a backup. Now another factor is power. These larger drives like this typically have their own power connection. So you're plugging into a wall socket and you're also plugging into your computer. And the solid state drives don't have that. You just plug them right into your computer, just one cable, which is great. But you can get that in hard drives too. These are typically called portable drives. And they do have size limits. Typically 4 or 5 terabytes is the limit for a portable drive. They're much smaller and they just plug in with one USB cable. But the price and size ratio are still superior to the SSDs. For instance, for about $100 you can get a 5 terabyte portable hard drive and it's going to cost you typically 2 or 4 times that to get a solid state drive with the same amount of storage. So if you're asking for my advice, which a lot of people do all the time, it is to get a hard drive, not a solid state drive, for a Time Machine backup. Get a large one. 12 terabytes or even 18 terabytes. If you really want something that's portable, that doesn't have another power cable attached to it, then go for one of the 5 terabyte portable hard drives. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.